Hey there, tubers. I'll try to walk you through the installation of the April Air Model 700 series humidifier with the uh, automatic humidistat Model 60. If you're a homeowner and you have not done this before and you haven't started, don't do it. Run away now. Watch another video. If you're still here, you're a glutton and you're in for it. So I pretty much have just finished this one. Um, let me show you what the finished product looks like. So this is in a this is in an attic in Las Vegas where they put their HVAC units sideways and they use this fiberboard type of ducting instead of uh, just like sheet metal ducts. So that makes the installation of this thing a little bit challenging and I'll show you where I or what I did to try to uh, reinforce this thing uh, when you're installing it in here on the side. But this is what it looks like. I put a little reinforcement um, band just to kind of keep some of the tension off of the, uh, of the fiberboard ducting itself. Um, so there's that. There you can see the plumbing and I go through this. I'll go through this a little bit better. Uh, there's the copper pipe, quarter inch ID, sorry, OD. It goes down there to my shutoff valve, goes into half inch pecs, and I spliced in oh, way back there to the hot water. And there's the drain, which I'm not entirely happy with. I'll probably wind up tweaking this a little. Uh, it's just a band clamp that holds some uh, half inch flexible pipe on here, but you can see it's kinked up a little bit. And then that comes down to a an elbow that goes into some half inch PVC. That I've spliced into the the HVAC drain or the, the AC condenser drain, evaporator drain. Sorry, not condenser, evaporator. And here's more of that. So this standoff pipe here was quite a bit taller, maybe that much taller, and I cut that off uh, with a sawzall. And then I've got the drain running in there. Is that up to code? Probably not, but. If you're homeowner DIY stuff, uh, it, you know, it doesn't matter that much uh, to me, my opinion. And then that drain, uh, that goes all the way to the outside of the house. Then, your other big component of this is the humidistat itself, which has a bunch of wiring to do. It also is installed in this fiberboard ducting, which, uh, you know, I made a took a galvanized piece of sheet metal and made a, a steel plate out there. And then uh, you, you've got to inset this in this fiberboard, which is fairly thick. Um, let me see if I can show you the piece I took out. Oh, it's right here. I see this stuff is pretty thick. So uh, I ended up calling April Air, asking them about the mounting of this stuff. And in the case of the fiberboard ducting, uh, they say, like, you can't, the, the back side of this has a small sensor almost right directly behind this wheel. Uh, and you can't just set the thing on the outside of this fiberboard and expect it to work. That sensor that's only about a half inch long has to get into the airflow of the return air, because this is the return duct, in order to sense the humidity. So you've got to cut the hole out, and it's got to be inset to where that sensor is in the airflow. It's important to get that to work right. Um, and then I'll go over the wiring here too. The one thing that I haven't finished completely is this is the outdoor temperature sensor that needs to be run outside so it can sense the air temperature and adjust the humidity levels appropriately. I am probably not going to run that straight outside because that's going to be one heck of a run over there to the eave through that nasty insulation. So I think I'm going to run it right over here and I'm going to just pop it right up underneath this screen, uh, which clearly that's the outdoors. And I think I'm going to call that good for outside air temp. That's the one thing I haven't done that you won't see, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's get down to some of the nitty gritty.
So here I have taken a piece of galvanized sheet metal for HVAC systems that I got from Lowe's and I uh, put the template on it, traced it out, and then instead of just straight cutting a hole out of the center, what I did was uh, drilled each corner and then in the center and I cut diagonally across it so that I could create like a channel to go up over the fiberboard and I just bent the uh, the flaps back cut them all flush with the edges and then that's what I'm gonna and, and I, I bent those over a, just an old shelf down there to kind of get the, the shape of this ridge and that's what I'm gonna put in the, the back of this all right so now I've got my template up here I've scored it out with a, uh, leveled it out, and then I scored it out with a utility knife. And then, what I'm going to do is uh, take my handy dandy little flashing there that I made. I'm going to unfold the, uh, you know, my ridges here. And of which, I also then cut some slots in here for these to go into on both sides and I also it doesn't look pretty but I also cut this down flattened these out so they would these would have something to catch on here on both sides I say I flattened it out and so these will kind of go up in there a little bit I may have to rework that one a skosh cut this side back so these uh, can these tabs on the top can go up in there but now time to take this off and remember measure twice cut once because if you need you can always make it bigger you can't make it smaller and there's your hole and I think because it's fiberglass I may put a little of that silver tape just around it just to kind of seal that up and then we'll put that in. Okay, and there it is with a layer of aluminum tape on it, now to install. Okay, and there it is, all mounted. I'm going to probably put, I don't know, don't have much room at the top, but I'll probably put a screw on each side that goes all the way through. Down on one on the bottom, down there, one on this side, and then I'm just gonna tape over it for now with the aluminum tape, try to seal it up, but we've got a nice tight, very tight fit in here, and I think it's plenty strong now to hold the weight, uh, but I'm thinking about taking a strap from, you know, up here on the rafter and running it down to the top of this when I'm done, but I think this is plenty strong. All right, I'll go over the <clears throat> the wiring here that I've done on the on this April Hour Model 60 controller automatic control um, the directions they give are I guess straightforward if you do this for a living or you have some experience with HVAC um, but I'll go over what I've done here that seems to be working so far the easiest two are the ones here in the middle uh, labeled ODT and they've got the the black wires going to it which is the these two right here they go up to the, the provided sensor that I don't have mounted yet. This is supposed to go uh, through a hole somewhere out there on the eave outside the house and measure the outdoor temperature so this thing can control the relative humidity on the inside of the house. Uh, so that's easy. Those are those middle two terminals right there. Then uh, you've got your, over here we'll start at the left, you got R and C, which I've got red and blue hooked into. And then this all goes through this five wire over here to the control panel on the furnace. And 
I've got them going to uh, red and C over here. Or, I'm sorry, R and C over here. So here's C. And here is R over here, which has this black wire coming out of the bottom. And then this red wire at the top goes over to the Model 60, which my understanding of it is that these provide power to this panel. Then you have got the W, the G, I'm sorry here if you can't see, you got the W, which is the white wire, the G right next to it, which is the yellow wire, and then the GF over here, which is the green wire. So all three of those wires then come back over to here. The W, which is right here, the yellow, which goes into the green wire here. I'll explain that in a moment. And then what was the other one? And then the white, which is this one right here. So my understanding is the W terminal is a call for heat and the, the green, uh, so then the yellow is a call for air conditioning. I'm sorry, I, I want to say yellow. The Y terminal here is a call for air conditioning. And then you've got the G terminal, which is to turn on the fan, a call for the fan. So now that I've kind of bumbled my way through that, so you've got W over here. Okay, you've got the W, the G, and the GF here on the side. W, the G, and the GF. Okay, so this panel here does not care about being connected to the Y terminal over here, which is an air conditioning signal. It says, hey, the AC's on or uh, turn the AC on because the humidifier does not run from my understanding when the air conditioner is on because an air conditioner actively pulls out humidity out of your air so what this cares about is having access to the heating signal which is the W so that's the white wire here coming into the white the W terminal over here the white wire here <clears throat> And then it also needs to be able to activate the fan, just the fan without the heater or AC. And then according to this wiring diagram, what it shows over here, this, this G wire is where things get a little complicated because what it shows is coming from the thermostat, your G wire then would go straight over here to this uh, humidistat panel. And then from the humidistat panel, it, so it would go to the the G on the thermostat will come all the way up here to the G on the humidistat and then the GF would be the output going down to the G on the furnace board. So the humidistat in this case acts as a like an interrupt for that fan signal. Why I'm not entirely sure. I read that it causes some thermostats I guess to click maybe if the humidistat is not wired in series like this. But what this doesn't tell you and why why it doesn't, I don't know, because uh, I'm going to be honest, it took me a little while to figure out how to do this. I was thinking I was going to have to run a new wire all the way from up here down to the thermostat downstairs, but you don't. This green wire here previously came up uh, to this terminal here on the furnace board. I just took it off, wire nutted it onto the yellow wire, uh, which I had not used, that then goes over here. And then the yellow wire is what I put into the G terminal on the on the Series 60 humidistat board. And then, as I already showed you, the GF over here is the green. And that comes around, and it actually goes. This is what's coming into the top. That top wire right there is going into the G terminal on that board. So that is that part. Uh, probably easily the most complicated. Then you've got the H and H terminals here which uh, I just used another length of the 18.5 thermostat wire. These go all the way around. I'll have to go over there to the uh, humidifier itself. 
and the uh, transformer over there that control the solenoid that turns your water off and on. Also, this board has a dedicated hum terminal, a humidifier terminal, and it says right there it will provide 24 volts AC, uh, probably to power your your system over here. So I guess you wouldn't have to necessarily take uh, an output off of your off your C wire there, which is also 24 volts. Uh, I I don't know I don't know why you would use one over the other, but it's there. If at least on this furnace, if that's something that uh, you have on yours, I think it's the same. It's just the same voltage. But I'm not an HVAC guy. Don't ask me. But if your terminal has it, uh, you can use it. I didn't because the directions did not say to. So I just did it the way they showed. Okay. So like I said, on the terminal board itself on H and H, I used another length of thermostat wire. The right hand H, I used the red wire. On the left hand H, I used the white wire. Then I strung that all the way back around here to the humidifier side. To where you see this. Okay, and just wrap the other wires back. So the red wire coming from the humidistat, I then wired into one of the leads coming off the, the solenoid that activates the valve up here. Okay, and then the white one, I just tied into one of the terminals on the transformer. Then I took another length of, uh, which, I mean, you don't have to, but I just had it handy, a thermostat wire. And I took another red wire from the top terminal, and then I crimped that onto the other lead going up to the solenoid. So now what you have, you got a direct connection from the transformer to the solenoid, and then you have an indirect connection via the ther the humidistat back to the transformer so that humidistat can uh, take that power and interrupt it back here, turning the valve on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, whenever it wants to send water up to the humidifier. So that's how I did it. And then the back side of the transformer, uh, I just wire nutted onto some lamp cord. And then I've got it uh, into a plug here that's probably a shade too small for the cord, but... Like I said, I'm not an HVAC guy or electrician just trying to get by. And then uh, I put in an outlet box. Just jumped it over from the next available. And then so that and the humidifier itself will be plugged in here. And that's basically the wiring on it. For the plumbing, the plan is I'm going to run the, uh, the old copper pipe, this quarter inch copper pipe into the valve. And I'm going to uh, secure the the shutoff valve right down there on that that stud, that rafter, whatever it is, uh, where we're going to transition into PEX. And then I'm going to run that PEX pipe all the way over there where you see the flashlight on. Not the blue pipe, but there's a white pipe underneath it that is my, my hot water over there. And I'm going to then tee into that with this guy boom right there so it should be pretty fast pretty simple that's the plan I've never used um, these shark bites before my understanding is they're just that simple take this slide it onto this thing and move on to well, move on to the next deal and I don't know if I can reliably show this to you it's my first attempt. See if I can embarrass myself. I know you're supposed to supposed to be a measurement deal to show you that it's going in far enough, but I'd say if we hit right about this mark or somewhere close to it where my thumbnail is. Holy smokes. It's tight. Here we go. Slid right on, right about there where my where my thumbnail was. So I'm gonna say, because I felt it kind of stop. I don't know if you can see that. And yeah, let's see if I can pull it off. 
nope. She's definitely not going anywhere. Easy enough. And I see you've even got a little rotation with it, which is good. So now I'm gonna secure this down over here on that on that rafter and then uh, run the PEX pipe, splice it in, and this part will be done. By the way, this is a half inch PEX pipe, half inch here, quarter inch out here with a shutoff valve. Okay, and I've got it in. You can, uh, you can see there, there's the, the shark butt I put in on the half inch PEX. Uh, went in just as easy as they say it does and no leaks, good to go there. Uh, and then I run it. I'm gonna put some put some of this insulation on it later. Uh, right now I just run it across just, just above the insulation line so that one can see it if they're up here, you know, doing stuff. Just around the corner, down here to this valve I showed. I got it mounted there. Put the copper pipe on. I gave it a little bit of a of a curl because this whole entire thing here uh, moves and I didn't want it to be tight and rigid or anything. And that's, I think that's it as far as um, all of the connections now go. Now it's just a matter of testing it out.